Ivan Sutherland is a legend, and he should be a household name. I once asked Ivan Sutherland, how could you possibly have done the first interactive graphics program, the first non-procedural programming language, the first uh, object-oriented software system all in one year? He said, well, I didn't know it was hard. There's not one person who's responsible for the creation of computer graphics, but he's someone that's frequently called the father of graphics. Why? Because little program called Sketchpad, also known as Robot Draftsman or the Man-Machine Graphical Communication System. And to give you context of what was going on in the world, I mean, Kennedy was president when this was created. And at the time, interfaces were essentially all character-based on computer systems, meaning they were all text. Sketchpad was different. Ivan E. Sutherland of MIT's Electrical Engineering Department created a system for making a digital computer an active partner of the designer. It wasn't the first computer-aided design software, or CAD, uh, that would go to Patrick Hanrady, who wrote CAD software at General Motors in 1961. Uh, but that was the same year that Sketchpad was made, and it broke new ground in 3D computer modeling and visual simulation. If you really want to get technical and look at the very first graphics ever produced, you'd go back to 1950 with Ben Leposky on an oscilloscope. There's some other examples, like in 1951, there was a whirlwind computer at MIT, which was the first computer with a video display of real-time data. Uh, but it was really in 1961 where all kinds of things happened. You have Space War being made, which is widely regarded as the first video game ever. And like I said, the CAD software was being produced at General Motors, and Sutherland was over at MIT working on his PhD thesis on this new thing called Sketchpad. Why do we even care about Sketchpad? Well, for a number of reasons. For one, the graphical user interface, or GUI for short, was derived from Sketchpad. And for those of you who don't know, just to get to this YouTube video, you had to go through some sort of graphical user interface. It's basically the difference between seeing a folder compared to seeing characters representing a directory on some sort of command line. It's much better to have pictures, isn't it? Its structure pioneered the use of what basically amounted to objects and instances, something that's seen in modern programming languages like Java. Most people during this time looked at computers as essentially giant calculators, but Sutherland had a different vision. He was able to look from a completely different perspective and see a sort of computer-human relationship that, in the end, we're all familiar with today. But this was new stuff. He was working on, at the time, it was a groundbreaking Lincoln TX2 computer. The Sketchpad system was developed on a computer that was designed and built at MIT Lincoln Laboratory. Its graphical output was a 9-inch 1024 by 1024 pixel direct access device. And for the software on it, it basically had nothing. There was no operating system. It was just a macro assembler. And what made it perfect for Sketchpad development was that it allowed for unusual pieces of input-output equipment, such as push buttons, toggle switches, and other devices. Users were able to interact with Sketchpad using a recently invented light pen, which is basically like a 1960s stylus. The designer draws directly on the cathode ray display with his light pen. They could create objects and manipulate them in a number of different ways. It's really crazy that, that they were doing this at this time. I mean, the Beatles weren't even really a thing yet, and these people were making these graphics. If the designer needs a bracket, he makes a rough drawing and then instructs the computer which of the lines should be horizontal and which vertical? The computer obeys the instructions and makes a neat looking bracket. It's basically the great grandparent of modern CAD programs like Blender, Maya, or SketchUp. You could zoom in and out, you could 
draw straight lines. You could rotate objects, warp them. You could even create a radius and draw a circle, much in the same way that you would do in a program today like SketchUp, which I wonder if the name is a reference to Sketchpad. But yes, yeah, SketchUp is in a lot of ways similar to how Sketchpad works. Um, for example, you can see right here I can draw a rectangle. I can move it around. I can grab a corner of it and drag it, just like you can in Sketchpad. He uses a system of push buttons and switches to give the computer directly such instructions as delete a line or move a point. You could create instances of objects and so you could create a bunch of copies of an object like um, you see them making this rivet here where they're warping it and when they're ready they instantiate a couple of them and put them into place and you can see how amazing this must have been back then. Essentially, what you're looking at is the first computer window ever. So I hope you appreciate this program the next time you hop on a computer. Thanks for watching this video today. I find this particular program amazing. And if you want to learn more about computer science topics like these, feel free to subscribe. And see you next time.